Melanie, would you like to respond to some of those questions and also talk about whether, um, in what way Brexit could be good for the Jews, could be good for Israel, or, or isn't, do you, have, do you see any effect from your uh, perspective? Brexit and the Jews, yes. Um, it, this is highly complicated, and I'll just try and unpick it as briefly as I can. Um, uh, the first thing I want to say is that the, the, the phenomenon of uh, growing anti-Jewish feeling, anti-Israel feeling that we have been witnessing over the past few years. Uh, in, the, in the first instance, I believe that that has been created by the progressive left in politics, because the progressive left in politics has singled out Israel as a unique and cosmic force for evil. It has founded its coverage uh, the media in particular, uh, the left-wing media here, Haaretz in Israel, has produced a coverage which is almost entirely based on an utterly mendacious view uh, in terms of saying outright lies, in terms of distortion, in terms of decontextualization, amplified in this country by the BBC, uh, which has the singular distinction of being a kite mark for objectivity and is thus unfortunately believed around the world when it produces this distorted view of Israel. If you project and portray Israel as a country of wanton child killers, then it is not surprising that you enrage the population, not just against Israel, but against anyone who supports Israel. Anyone who supports Israel becomes therefore automatically not just wrong, but really a beyond the pale person. And that is the climate that has been created over many years on that side of politics. Now, on the other side of politics... And bring it back to the Brexit vote, and then we're going to have to I'll end. get there. On the other side of politics, we have a growth of uh, neo-Nazi uh, fascist type groups. And I believe that those, that growth, which is very, very troubling indeed, uh, has been nurtured and is always nurtured when a society loses all sense of what it is itself, and when white working class boys, and they are mainly white working class boys and men, uh, view themselves as trash because they're told they're trash. I have written for many years that the collapse and decline of national identity, priding what Britain is, the desire to erase what Britain is, the telling of generations of children that Britain and Britain's history is in itself racist and xenophobic, that, that I have said over and over again, that will lead to the rise of real fascism and neo-Nazism, and so we see. And these are the kind of people who are going around with the, doing these terrible things that we are now reading about in terms of post-Brexit of attacks, verbal and otherwise, on people they think are immigrants. Now, will Brexit help that? Well, um, I think uh, that it could help it in this sense, that Brexit is a vote for the nation the concept of the nation. Now, one of the reasons why Israel is a pariah on the progressive side of politics is that Israel is the quintessential nation. It is a, an ethnic nation, doubly damned. It is a Western ethnic nation, triply damned. Now we have a vote by the British people for a Western ethnic nation, a nation of Britons, a nation that understands its identity to be shaped by hundreds of years of history. Not a nation that excludes people who want to come in, but a nation that sure. actually has a sense of itself. Now, if people have a sense of themselves, they become so less prejudiced, okay. not more. And the, my final point is that the demonization that Jonathan talks about, we should all deplore it. The, the attacks on immigrants are truly, truly dreadful. I personally regret very much, and I was horrified by the fact that over that weekend, after Brexit won, there was an absolute duty on both the government, i.e. the Remain side, and Leave to stand up and say, everybody who's here is welcome, 
They are here forever. The 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 uh, people who come from the United from the from from, from Europe who are here, uh, it is unconditional. They're here and they are welcome, etc. Nothing was said. Nothing was said. And into that vacuum uh, came came these these terrible things. My final point, however, is that the poster to one side, the poster was beyond the pale that Jonathan is talking about. But if you look at what Leave was saying, it was all about control of our borders, democratic control of our borders, and there are too many here. I don't think there was anything in that that was racist. What was the case, however, was that Remain said, anyone who is a Brexiteer is racist. They are saying that immigrants should be sent back. That is what Stephen Kinnock said. Stephen Kinnock said, in terms, Brexit wants to send immigrants back. Now, if you are a member of a neo-Nazi group, you will hear that as a validation of your position. You will hear it being said that racism is now okay. And that is what validated neo-Nazis, nothing that the, the, the Leave side said. Thanks. Okay, and one Super moment quick. for Jonathan. So, I'll be as quick Super as I can. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Stephen Kinnett was the dominant voice for Remain. I think if, if he said the words you said, I think other people said yeah. different things. Two other very quick things. You said that this was a vote for uh, Britain as a Western ethnic nation. See, that worries me tremendously because if, but I think, I've always conceived British national identity as a civic thing. Yeah. If it's an ethnic identity, I don't know what place Jews have in that. That becomes something white and Christian and we don't have a place in that. Okay, and the, so, and the point final point is, I'm afraid, I, Mel and I completely agree there is a problem in some parts of the left in attitudes to Israel. I've written about it and so has Melanie. But to include uh, the, the media organizations and specifically Haaretz as being guilty of mendacious reporting is really, really unfair. And, and I think, you know, I'm not just saying it because of here, but Haaretz often and The Guardian and other people are offering a clear eyed description of facts we may not want or may not like, but that's very different from accusing them of dishonesty. And we now have a break so we can continue talking about this. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Dana. The audience to come Thank, Thank you, Melanie. Thank, Thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan. That was gripping. The breakout sessions will start very promptly after lunch.